Hello, this is Dwight Norris of FishingAtWork.com, and here I am in the Broad Canal. As you see, it's just a little bit iced over, but further down, it's completely. If you could look down below, the very edge of the boardwalk here is actually um, visible. So I'm going to start here at the beginning of the boardwalk, which this is the second uh, little seating area, and see what we catch. So keep watching. I said I was going to back to fishing here but it got so cold and miserable and everything had like six inches of ice so this is my first time back and also on the other side of the river right at the um the charles river esplanade it is completely the thought so i'm gonna go there tomorrow and see what's hitting there because i suspect that it's time for the crappie to start spawning and they're gonna go to the shallows first followed by the bass then followed by the panfish like uh Breams and sunfish and bluegills, etc. etc. So here we go. And I need to uh, extend this. Now we're further up and right over here is a frozen bluegill. It's actually frozen inside the ice. Not sure if it got too cold, it died, it floated up and then it got even colder and froze the bluegill into the ice. It's kind of a, kind of a spectacle there, but uh, hopefully the other fish are still active.
bites here either. Maybe the shadows aren't working so well. Maybe I'll go to a deeper section near the mouth of the Broad Canal and maybe there's some fish hanging out there. Or maybe there's been some mass exodus because of the fish death that I'm seeing over here, but I'm gonna try to figure it out. Stay tuned. I went out to deeper water, there were less fish, but they were bigger. So, in my elusive quest to find out where is the Broad Canal fish, we are here at our last stop because I'm about to run out of time soon enough. But if I get hidden, you know, I'll stretch it a little bit. I'm going to use a heavier weight than, than whatever this is. It's probably a quarter ounce. Not, not doing it. Of course, the weight of a fish would be better. had a problem with cold weather fishing. The first problem is I don't want to go outside. The second problem is I don't have much experience with it. A lot of people around here do ice fishing and have fun with that, but man, my fingers get cold, my toes, it's over. There's gotta be some fish over here somewhere. Even they still my bait. That's cool. At least I know you're here. All right, geese. is a virtue, but uh, when you know fish should be here, all that goes out the door. So, uh, Robert or Evan or anybody else around the neighborhood that fishes this area, what in the heck is going on? I, I did see the bluegill die over there, which is maybe natural, might be unnatural, but there should be getting something around here. Yellow perch, white perch, bass, bluegill. There's four potential species. And there's the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the bull, bull catfish. Be sliding in and out of here. Hold over striper. But no, my worm is still sitting here like nothing eats a worm. Take a making me look questionable on camera. <laughs>
then I could worry about trying other techniques out and artificial lures. I can't catch them with a worm. I'm wasting my time then. And as fishing at work people, we don't have time to waste. Like right now, not cool. Glad to be out here, but I'll be happier than catching fish. There are people just pacing back and forth, are Doing their daily walk, that's what they want to do with their hell shine. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Try some fishing. Walk, jog, bike. Everybody's very interested to see if I'll catch something. There's actually a guy up in the four story or something of this building in front of me. And he was looking at me for a while. Must be a must be a fisherman. If you're watching, easy enough. Just going down the elevator, getting your stuff, and trying it out. I mean, what are you gonna lose? A little bit of time one day. Trying out is not hard to do. You can try anything. And until then, you won't really know. Like I talk to my children. Hey, we, we have something new to eat. You'll know what it is. You don't want to eat that. But hey, just give it a try. You might like it. It's got cheese in it. It's got butter or whatever else that's delicious. Try something out before you say it's not possible or it's not good or I don't know about that. Everything should be tested. I think I've thoroughly tested this area. This is ridiculous. There must be no oxygen in here. I've gone close, I've gone out, I've gone under. I don't know what other way I can go. I can go long. Sling it over there and get hung on that pilot. Let's do it. Watching right now. Go ahead and go back to whatever you're doing. I'm just gonna try a few more spots around here, see if anything bites. If it happens and you're not looking away, I'm gonna be a holler. Until then, this is not working. that sound is that's the MIT building I think it's telling you the time or some class is starting people are out and about everywhere they want to make sure that you get to your class that it's probably pretty expensive so you don't want to miss it I have to do a class there as well MIT 6.0.0.1 Python uh, programming fantastic course 
They estimated on edx.org that it would take about 15 hours a week to study and prep that course and do well. But I spend about 25 hours. You know, it's not about the time, it's about what you get out of it. And I passed with a B, so that's fantastic. And I really learned a lot. It was definitely way harder than some of the other courses I took in Python. I'm not sure why I'm talking about Python right now. But it's shooting the breeze. I told you to go away if you're not, not interested. Don't listen to me. the more consistently I come here at lunchtime people start to wonder what the heck is this guy doing? How is he fishing at lunchtime? Why is he fishing at lunchtime? Or hey, I'm a fisherman. Could I be doing that? Uh, I, I, got, I got, you know, I got reports to do. People are looking at me. They're wondering why I am all the time. Checking my email. I, like, I have no time for that. I barely have time to, you know, scratch my butt. Nonetheless, go fishing. It's, uh, it's not a good life. You think about enhancing your life, and sometimes it's not about fishing. Maybe it's just about your loss of time, and you should think about ways that you can devise to get your time back. Because that's your most precious commodity. And you're, you can't buy that. You can buy other people's time to make things go faster, but you can't go backwards. You can't stop the time. Everybody has 24 hours a day, seven days in a week. However you spend it, it's up to you. Maybe you get a lot from it, maybe you don't. But if you look back, it's pretty easy to see what you're doing and what results it gave you. My result for the last half an hour has been, has been a half an hour, has not Maybe it has, has been very poor. Not good today. So I'm gonna try that place where I used to go in the summertime over at the Charles Esplanade. I'm gonna work those areas there. Um, I know the lily pads aren't back, but the roots are starting to grow and the fish are trying, starting to come out of the deep ponds and the humps of the river and flow back into those little islands. So I think right at those entry points, I'll find some decent value. I'm really hoping that the crappy are moving. I know they aren't around aren't around here. Nothing's around here right now. So. Let's call it a day. Let's go. Let's go.